I'm Kurt Shimmers. Every day, fortunes are gained and lost in the financial markets. News, trends, and even geopolitical events shape your financial landscape. Join me and my expert guests right now on Traders Nation. Welcome. You are tuned in to Traders Nation. Thanks for making us a part of your day. Don and I have got a jam-packed show. Uh, Sam McElroy, he's, he's back with us here today. He's co-founder of At Financial and At Financial Investments. We're going to be talking about jobless claims. They dropped to a 49-year low. All right. What paved the way for this tremendous prosperity? We're going to be talking with him about that. Plus, uh, Don we're gonna, and I are going to be talking about cannabis and gambling. Both of these sectors have taken a beating a little bit uh, for a long term, and a, another one not so bad. All right, stocks, gas, and a whole lot more. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Traders Nation, if you promise not to tune out, we promise not to talk about you while you're gone. Traders Nation. Traders Nation, get Pro Online DVD Trader today. Whether you're an experienced trader or just beginning, you'll improve your skills dramatically. Click on the Knowledge Center button to order your copy today. Traders Nation, delivering what you want when you want it. Traders Nation. Traders Nation, live. It's on the whole time. Bringing traders coverage of the markets, solid trading strategies, potential hot stock movers, world-class guests, informative callers, and unsurpassed market chatter for traders to take all the way to the bank. You guys got some great stuff coming out. I mean, the great station. Stay on top. This is always changing. It's always fresh. Something new. Stay tuned in. Traders Nation. It's always something to look forward to. Clearly, you can hear the difference. Traders Nation. It's the Traders Nation Network. Okay. Hi, I'm Steve Forbes. You're watching Traders Nation. Welcome back. You are tuned in to Traders Nation. Hey, listen, uh, real quickly, Don, I want to let everyone know about Pro Online Trader DVD. They can get a copy of it over at TradersNation.com. Uh, you can learn about sh uh, shorting. You can learn about resistance, support, fib retracements, candlesticks, all that good stuff. If this sounds great to you, you need to get a copy of Tr Pro Online Trader DVD. Get a copy. TradersNation.com. Click on that more button, man, and we will take care of you. Makes for a great stocking stuffer, too, Don. We're in that season, Don. Okay. That's right. We're in that season. Get get this for yourself and your loved one. Get this for your neighbor that complains he's not making enough money out there in the market. Okay. That's right. Don, cannabis. All right. So let me preface this just a little bit, Don. So certainly we've seen some profit taking going on in a couple of these sectors. Um, cannabis is 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 no uh, exception to that. Um, some of, this, in fact, most of the stocks we're talking about today on our list today are down, but they have been on our list. We got to bring people up to date of what's going on with these if they're wondering, right, Don? So certainly, let's let's start off with cannabis. Uh, but there's some good things going on around these companies, around these stocks. All right, uh, MJ uh, is the first one on our list here today. Uh, Mary Joseph is the phonics for that one, Don. E it's an ETF. It's ETF's Managers Trust. Currently trading at thirty-one dollars and fifty-five cents, Don. Uh, 353,000 shares exchanging hands here today. Um, talk, as this stock took a tumble off its highs, yes. okay, it dropped to its 200-day moving average uh, a couple days ago. It's been trading sideways from there, and just a little bit of sideways, okay? Not enough. Just like a couple days of sideways action. Don, your thoughts? What's going on well, out there? On the, can and on the cannabis stock, uh, obviously we're in the process of sorting out all these companies, but MJ. Yeah. Certainly, certainly represents the basket of stocks that are in the industry, and sure. look, they're the experts yeah. over there when they put these ETFs together. But you're right; yeah. this uh, ETF uh, got pounded down. It's yeah. up uh, almost a buck today, but this represents the best of the cannabis play. So that's one you want to keep an eye on right. for those that don't want to follow the individual stocks. Yeah. So this MJ, which is like you said, Don, it is an ETF. It's this basket of cannabis, so maybe it's a it's a good benchmark or the pulse on what's going on out there with with the cannabis companies, the cannabis stocks in the market. Okay, um, let's go on to the next one here. C G C Charlie Golf Charlie Canopy Growth Corp is the name of this one. Currently trading at thirty eight dollars and sixty three cents down from we talked about it last. Um, Two point eight million shares exchanging hands here today. Just like MJ, it dropped past its one twenty one day moving average. It's fifty day moving average. Okay, and this one's hovering above its a two hundred day moving average. Sideways action going on right now, John. Don. 
Well, Canopy Growth is the company that has Constellation Brands, the big uh, beverage company, yeah. in the deal with them. I think they're investing north of $2 billion in the transaction. So Canopy Growth has taken off a little bit, but uh, this is one of the leaders in the business. They've been around a long time, and uh, there it is. Uh, we have uh, Canopy trading in here today at, uh, where is it? Uh, $38.63. Okay, that that's up substantially from where it, uh, you know, all, all got started. But that's one in the canopy business that you want to keep an eye on. Sure, canopy growth. Yeah. CGC is the symbol on that. Yeah, and uh, it did get the pounded down, but they all did. So yeah, it, it's bouncing right back. Yeah, no, yes, that's exactly right. So let's go on to our next stock. So Cron, C R O N is the is the symbol for that one. Cronus Group currently trading at seven dollars and ninety four cents, down from when we spoke about it last. Two point seven million shares exchanging hands here today. Just like the two previous stocks we just talked about, it dropped past its 21-day and its 50-day moving average, all right? This one's moving right along at its 200-day moving average. Bring your charts up on this. Right at its 200-day moving average, I, I, I would like to see it to hold this uh, technical point at the, right here in the charts, Don, for Cron, C-R-O-N. Yeah, this, is, this is a company that invests in various, this is an investment company. They invest in various uh, cannabis stocks. Yeah. And uh, here it is trading at around uh, 814 right now. That sounds like the time of day, but it's up a half a <laughs> buck today. And it's one that you want to keep an eye on. Yeah, certainly. Absolutely. All right. So nonetheless, uh, so what we're seeing here also, too, because I want to talk about this, profit taking going on. Uh, the way these have yeah. dropped off, there's some profit taking going on. Um, you know, there's some traders that are that are you know a little bit nervous about these because you don't know where these That's are right. going to go. Especially like you said, like a, a second ago, Don, is that especially where these came from? These were a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, five dollars stocks. Okay, now they're trading at fifteen, thirty, forty, hundred, two hundred dollars. Okay, um, so it makes people nervous. They're a little bit quicker on the sell uh, button than they normally would be. Okay, and this is the traders. Yeah. Yeah. All right. One, you, one, you, one we also want to keep an eye on is ACB. That's the one that is now trading on New York. We called that to the viewer and listeners' attention several weeks ago. Right. Aurora Cannabis started off in uh, trading on uh, the over the counter, and now it has moved up to New York. It's only trading at around seven dollars and twenty cents. This is one you want to keep an eye on. Yeah, without a doubt. So, like Don said, there is a bright spot here, uh, and certainly some of these stocks, kind of stocks, have come out. They start trading on the OTCBB, the bulletin board. All right, small cap area, and they graduate. They moved on to the larger exchange. Okay, and this one certainly did that. ACB used to be ACBFF, now ACB. Don currently trading uh, right around that ten dollar range, uh, and um, so uh, certainly, nonetheless, uh, keep an eye out on these. Um, Don, what else we got going on today? Well, we're going to talk about gaming, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, we certainly are. Uh, Wynn okay. Resorts. Don, certainly, sorry. Wynn Resorts, uh, certainly we have. Uh, you know, Don, we are really high on, on gaming, and we still are, because fundamentally nothing has changed in the gaming, in the gaming industry, Don. Um, and so what's really important here is that, that you have to understand that. Okay, Win Win Resorts currently trading at one hundred one dollars and ten cents. Five hundred ninety-three thousand shares exchanging hands here today. Uh, bring your charts up on this one, Don. Your thoughts? Well, on Win, uh, fundamentally nothing has changed with the company. I've been saying that for quite a while, and this is like one of those stocks I call them. It's on sale because uh, look, while Steve Win has left the company, his name was on the marquee. Yeah, it's business as usual in Win. Yeah, and. With when W Y N N is the symbol on that, sure. And uh, they're, look, they're knocking the cover off the ball over in Macau, and they have been doing that for a long time. Yeah. So the stock is trying to rally in here today. It's up two bucks. Yeah. A uh, great management team in place at Win, and I've got a lot of faith uh, in this company. Right. One hundred and one dollars and a half on Win today. Yeah. One hundred one fifty. One hundred one fifty. Uh, charts on it, as you said, uh, saw actually uh, dismal. I mean, the, the charts on this had this this very painful, dismal downward bias. I mean, it's not like a quick and like some of the, the sell-offs that we're seeing in the cannabis area. The gaming win we're seeing is 
just this downward bias. At some point, Don, that's going to flatten out, level out, and then you start seeing that buying coming back in. Yeah. But there's not enough confidence to keep buying it. There's just this, there's maybe a little bit of selling going on, but it's just this bias, this long-term bias, downward bias that we're seeing on win. Um, I'm hoping, again, it'll flatten out. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, currently trading no. 10150, uh, 593,000 shares exchanging hands here today, Don. Now, on uh, with when its counterpart is Las Vegas Sands, LVS, which is another Las Vegas-based company. Now, they just got approval to go ahead with their operations in Japan. They, yeah. they won the approval on spot over there. But LVS, another stock that's been uh, hammered down, trading in here at $53.02 today on substantial volume. Yeah. That stock got a $70 price tag this morning from Union Gaming. Nice. So that's that's one we want to keep an eye on. Okay. All right. So nice. So they got a price target from Union Gaming here today, but the charts, let's go over those, Don. Uh, it's trading well below. It's 21-day, 50-day, and 200-day moving average. Uh, it's also biased to the downsides. This, the chart on uh, Las Vegas Sands looks very similar to Win. okay? LVS, bring it up on your charts, check it out. Hey, Don, let's go on to MGM. Uh, MGM Resorts MGM. currently trading. Now, this, is, this one's not as bad. The charts don't look as bad on Win as Las Vegas, or on MGM as they do on Win and Las Vegas Sands. Uh, uh, $25.01 currently. And uh, with 1.4 million shares exchanging hands here today. Hey, Don, we're out of time. Um, Sam McElroy's going to be coming up here. Uh, we're going to be talking with him about jobless claims. On the other side, Don, we'll shotgun out. We'll shotgun out a couple of those okay. uh, gambling stocks, and uh, we'll finish up with those. All right, you are tuned in, to Traders Nation. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Traders Nation salutes America. Stay strong, stay proud, and stay in the green with us. Traders Nation Live, bold, and packed for profit every weekday morning. Traders Nation Live, bold, and packed for profit. Sign up today for our weekly HTML newsletter and check out the Traders Nation store for products to enhance your stock trading day. Traders Nation, what you want, when you want it. Traders Nation. Hey, Jeff Carlisi here from 38 Special, and we're rocking it up right here with Traders Nation. Welcome back. You are tuned in to Traders Nation. My pleasure to have back with us once again Sam McElroy. He's co-founder of At Financial, the at sign, and At Financial Investments. Sam, welcome back to Traders Nation. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's always a pleasure, Sam. Always. Hey, listen, jobless claims dropped to a 49-year low. Sam, you know, what paved the way for this tremendous uh, prosperity that we're seeing? You know, I, I think there's a lot of different things that are going on. Yeah. Um, you know, if we just look at it from a general standpoint, I think over a number of years, we've had a strengthening economy in terms of the jobless numbers. Okay. Um, we've been a declining rate in terms of jobless numbers for a while here, and I think that this is just kind of continuing along that trend line. I think there's some other variables that kind of go into it in terms of, you know, an aging population and some people just dropping out of the workforce, uh, you know, other things like that. But I certainly don't think that that's enough sure. to uh, to fully account, nor would I use that to discount the fact that jobless numbers are actually at a really good point, you know, sure. right now, historically. Sure, sure. And certainly, like you said, I mean, there's a lot of things that make up a recipe, if you will, Sam, that make up uh, the number of, you know, with this record 49-year low that we're seeing, uh, growth in business, right? Um People, they're looking to hire, and uh, money coming back into the economy, a consumer economy. So there's a lot of things that make up what we're looking at, right? Yeah, I think I think that anytime you uh, are working your way out of a recession, yeah, and you have a number of other variables that are kind of going into it, it opens up the door and an opportunity for businesses to be able to fill spots, to be able to grow, and to be able to expand. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much I would attribute, you know, kind of money coming back in and some of those different pieces to be able to uh, look at people hiring because, in a sense, the one metric that I was really hoping to see increase yeah. still seems a little stagnant to me, and that's, that's really the average wage increases. Okay. So I think we're doing a great job in terms of getting people employed and getting them working. Yeah. Now I want to see a lot more money kind of going back into, uh, you know, pouring into the economy, being able to uh, 
uh, help the average wage continue to increase as the average consumer sure. can help contribute towards GDP growth as well. Do you think we may see that? Because that's certainly that would maybe a trailing effect. Employers are having a hard time finding people, and that's going to come up here in a second. But so since they're having a hard time finding people, certainly they may want to make sure that the people, the employees that they have now, um, are going to be taken care of and, and a wage increase, bonuses, uh, things like that may be attractive for companies to employ to keep good people within their ranks, right? Yeah. You know, I was having this very conversation with somebody literally yesterday. Yeah. And uh, that's the way that we're supposed to see this flow from, a, from an economic standpoint. You know, you want to see the demand in the marketplace get a little bit stronger sure. so that uh, so that corporations do have to increase wages and incentives to keep key talent. Sure. That then should translate into inflation because businesses need to sell their goods for a little bit more to be able to cover those expenses. Yeah. And the Fed should then respond by raising interest rates. That's yeah. the way that we want to see all of this play out. And it very well may. Right. Um, I think one of the things we need to just be cognizant of is the fact that while all this is happening and strengthening, there are some other uh, warning signs, so to speak, that are also starting to emerge. I, I read an article uh, from, uh, I think that came out last night or yesterday or something like that, yeah. uh, that was basically quoting uh, a senior official from Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and they were basically saying that right now 14 of the 19 indicators that they look at to kind of gauge market directionality yeah. are now starting to look a little bit bearish. And that doesn't mean that the economy is slowing or the, the economy has issues. The question we have to watch, though, is just how uh, connected the economy is uh, to the stock market and whether or not the stock market, which is by many accounts due for a little bit of a pullback, Sure. If that's going to be able to slow some of the progress we've seen from an economic standpoint. You know, as a trader, it almost sounds like the, the gains that we've made in the jobs is almost, it's like the market, right, is where we have to digest those gains, and then we have to see where we go from here. Um, do you see a continuation in the job markets, and, and will we be able to keep up this pace, or your thoughts? Yeah, my general thoughts is that I don't see, I think under most circumstances, the answer to that would be yes. Okay. I think that I would see that people would continue being employed. There's a great big if, which is if the stock market cannot unravel this. You know, we're, we're seeing two converging variables, which is the stock market having almost a 10-year run in terms of a cyclical bull market. Um, but we're seeing some issues starting to creep in in this last 30 days or so yeah. that's suggesting that that may not continue at this pace. The question is, if the market were to be negative or were to pull back, what would that do in terms of the Fed's plans to continue raising interest rates, and would that bleed into corporations having to either slow their growth or, uh, unfortunately, go back to you know laying people off to try to keep their own financial solvency? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Uh, uh, what makes comes to mind to me is that with the number of surplus jobs, and this is what I was referring to a couple a couple minutes ago, whereas employers are having a hard time finding skilled workers all right so there's there's a surplus of jobs that are out there right now and i'm wondering in my head i'm thinking out loud is is there a problem with employers um finding actually skilled workers to fill those positions and and if so there's certainly some opportunity for there for some people that are out of work looking for work or maybe even have a hard time finding work i wonder if they can shift into those skilled uh type of skills that these employers are looking for your thoughts yeah, I think that's definitely an opportunity, and, and it's not a unique one. It's one that we've seen kind of continually emerging as technology has continued to develop throughout the course of our history. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of just industries changing and needing people that can kind of keep pace and change with the industry. Right. So some of this has always been about people getting retooled in terms of their skill set. Sure. Um, I remember, I don't know how many years ago, maybe five or six years ago, there was a strong emphasis in starting to help promote programs that was going to train people to have new skills right. really towards the same end or the same goal. Right. Yeah. And I think companies, what they're also doing too, because they're really proactive on this, they, they realize that the demand that they need as their business, what their business needs are, they realize what that demand is. <clears throat> and if they start having difficult time recruiting folks, I think they're coming up with ways of training and planning so they can do that internally also, Sam. 
And that would be a good solution. You yeah. know, it's always that, that cost benefit, you know, exercise that you gotta go through. How much does it take yeah. to have a you know, a good training program to get people certified or whatever they need to do to be sure. able to do the job. Sure. But I definitely think that corporations trying to solve this problem on their own yeah. is uh, is gonna be a better, more long term, permanent, effective solution right. um, than waiting for people in and of themselves to be because it ends up being cyclical. You know, if I'm out of work and they say, well, you need to have this skill set for you to be able to get this job. But sure. I'm thinking, well, I'm trying to feed my family, so how am I going to you know, take time to go learn this skill set? It ends up being really problematic. But sure. if I can come into a corporation where I have a job and the job is going to train me how to do the job effectively, then it solves a lot of those problems simultaneously. Yeah, I agree. Now, granted, I, I think that it's, it's, it's risky for the business to do it, probably costly. But if they have that need, that certainly is one solution for some of these larger corporations to fulfill that need and, you know, and help relieve that stress on trying to find that perfect candidate uh, that they're going to need for that position. What's your outlook as we finish up here in 2018 and then maybe even to 2019, Sam? In, in terms of the job market or in yeah. terms of the market? Yeah, in for terms of the job market in whole and then in, maybe even the market, too. We're almost out of time. Yeah. You know, I don't see a whole lot of change, I think, ending out in 2018. I think in 2019, it remains to be seen because I think a lot of it is going to be unfortunately tied to what happens with the market yeah. uh, towards the end of 2018, early 2019. Yeah. You know what? And I think the feds have something to do with that, too, because I think they're a big player in this. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of nervous cats that are out there, you know, with the rising, with the rate of the rise of the Fed and certainly uh, the potential slowing of that. All right. So we're out of time. Sam, where can we find you at? Yeah, so the easiest place is the website, www.atfinancial.com. Okay, atfinancial, the letters atfinancial.com, Sam? Yep, you right. got it. Head on over there today, folks. Check out Sam's website, atfinancial.com. Sam, always good time. Thanks for being with us today. Absolutely. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Nice. Okay, we can do that. Hey, uh, welcome back. You are tuned into Traders Nation. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna switch on over to the payers payment processors. Uh, Don and I over the break decided that's probably a great move to go. Don, what's going on with the payers? Well, with the payers today, you have them all up substantially. Let's start with Square. It's at seventy three bucks. It's up about uh, oh, three and a half dollars right now. That's cute. Master Charge is up almost uh, six and a half dollars. Ma. And Visa, Visa reported today. They had a great quarter. Stock is up uh, three and a half dollars, and then of course we have uh, PayPal, which is up two and a half dollars today. Nice. So they're all up today. Yeah. Uh, they're bouncing up, and our uh, Brazilian uh, play here, Pax P A G S, is actually down. Okay, almost a buck, but that's one you want to keep an eye on. All right, so score S Q is the ticker symbol for that one. Keep it on your radar. Certainly performing well here today. Visa is V, Mastercard M A. Uh, PAGS, P-A-G-S, that's Don's Brazilian pick in the payment processing, processing area, Don, right? All right? There you go. Well, look, these pay, pay companies, they're not going anywhere. No. If anything, they're, they're expanding their offerings, yeah. and we can talk about that on another Traders Nation show. Absolutely. Because Square, Square and PayPal have announced some new products. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, they're not going away. Digital payment processing is going to be here to stay. It's going to be the thing. It's not only today, but it's the future. All right, Don, do you know anything we talked about here today? No. All right. I don't either. It's good to know. Uh, and they're not buy or sell recommendations. Certainly, we appreciate you tuning in to Traders Nation. Everybody, have a fantastic day, and we'll see you on the next edition.